Welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. Here are your hosts, Coach Mike Keene and Jeff Hodges. Hello and welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. I'm Jeff Hodges alongside UNA Head Baseball Coach Mike Keene. Coach Keene, just over a week ago the UNA Lions were sitting at 7-15 and 15 overall, really struggling for some confidence and uh, trying to find an identity. But uh, as of today's show, you've won six straight. Uh, the team seems to be getting some key hits. Your pitching and defense is still holding up and the Lions seem to be heading in a different direction. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, we've been kind of waiting and of course everybody said it's going to change. And I kept saying when. Uh, but I uh, kind of reverts back to that. That Montevallo game was probably one of our top games we played last week, and then it's kind of been able to sustain it, and we're we'll able to win some games. We're actually getting a few breaks our way, and, and usually that's when you have winning streaks. That's usually what happens, and, and we're just hoping we can continue to go and keep working hard, and, and we got to continue to improve, though. We can't just kind of sit and think everything's going great. we got a lot of good opponents, and we got to continue to work hard. We mentioned a week ago, but it's worth repeating that of the first 22 games, 12 of the games or the teams that you played in those games are nationally ranked right now. So that shows how tough the schedule was early on. It's eased up a little bit, but still some uh, some tough competition. But your team seems to have risen to the occasion. Yeah, it was uh, you know going into like we said, I, I knew that was going to be a challenge for us. Uh, I felt we were up for the challenge, and we were in every game. Um, and then now we got kind of a stretch where you know we actually did get to beat a, uh, a ranked opponent. But you know in the GSC, you know on those weekends, all weekends are going to be challenging whether they're ranked or not ranked and that's what I told the guys I said you got to throw the records out in the GSC and you got to continue to play well uh, we just feel now that we've been uh, swinging the bats a little bit better and that's kind of been one of the differences in the in the last uh, week and a half or so we've been able to get those hits where before we weren't and so hopefully we'll continue to stay a lot more productive like we have in the last few games. It started with a 9-5 to win at Montevallo they were ranked 17th in Division 2 you followed up with a 7-2 to win over Stillman at home and then swept a big Gulf South Conference series in Memphis against Christian Brothers. First game, always important series. You got a 12 to 2 win, a lot of hits, and Brantley Clonch, a good job on the mound. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Brantley's been pitching well uh, for us that game one since, uh, you know, K went down with his injury and moved into that role. So, uh, you know, he's had some big first game wins, and we've had that position before, then we're unable to get the next two wins. So we, you know, we knew that was going to be a test for that next seven inning ball game. And, you know, the first game we swung the bats real well and uh, they had uh, Cooley pitched uh, really well in that second game. And, you know, that, that game, you know, anything could happen in that game. It was a lot tighter than what I wanted it to be. And, and you know, they, both guys pitched really well, including Riley. Riley Sanderson with a shutout for UNA in that second game. UNA wins that one ten, uh, two to nothing. And then finally on Sunday, a seven to one win, and Kyle Conkle uh, got the win on the mound, and you also got a little offense in that game. Right, you know, Kyle had a, obviously a really good week offensively, and then we're able to get him back on the mound, and uh, he pitched well, was in the zone, was able to mix pitches, and then uh, and this was a game where the bottom of our lineup, uh, especially the six, seven, eight guys, had great days at the plate. You know, Jake Smith, Josh Carpenter, and uh, Tyler Hall all had really good days, and really that's where all the run and the production came from from those guys to give us that win, and that's something we really haven't had. Uh, you know that part in this year, so that was nice to see them. So now, if we can get the top of the order going with the back of the order, you know, obviously we can put up some runs, kind of like we did against Selma. You close out the week with a 15-2 win over Selma, as you mentioned there, and it was one of those where eight of the nine guys in your starting lineup got hits in that ball game. Uh, but it was, this is an opponent that was a little scary for you, I know, because they came in 14 and two, a little bit unknown, had played West Alabama very well, and uh, but you were able to get a big win. Yeah, they were. Uh, you know, I, I, it's hard to find some information about them, and I, I did see the scores with West Alabama, which obviously West Alabama is a very good ball club. So I knew this was a, a team that we couldn't just kind of show up and think everything's going okay. And we did talk about it, and they do have some talent. I think it was one of those games where we talked about. Uh, probably one of the first games where we had the whole lineup hitting. And, you know, their guy they threw on the mound, they felt good about him. They felt good about their club. And when, uh, you know, uh, Dylan Boston hit that home run and it kind of opened it up and then we just never let up the rest of the time. And they had to go to their bullpen. I thought we were patient. I thought we had very good at-bats uh, throughout the rest of the game. Kyle Conkel was named Gulf South Conference Player of the Week. He was also a National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association South Region Player of the Week. Uh, he hit 474, drove in 11 runs, scored five, had a couple home runs. Uh, didn't figure into that, but he also had that win on the mound. So a great week for Kyle. Yeah, he really was. And, you know, he's really, uh, like I said, you could see him starting to turn the corner uh, about a couple weeks ago, very patient, laying off pitches. Then when he gets pitches up in the zone and uh, he's been hitting the ball hard and real consistent, getting you know, his on-base percentage has really gone way up. His walks have gone way up. So he's really become that good three-hitter that we were hoping he was going to be. And, and he's been his RBI total, obviously, has gone way up. Uh, and that's what we need out of our three, four guys. And, and he's been able to sustain that role. Plus, really stepping into that uh, pitcher DH role. And all that's tough, playing first base both games. We kind of moved into first base and come back and pitch and so obviously a great week for him and uh, great uh, for UNA to get those you know the acknowledgement for that. We'll take a quick break and we'll have highlights of UNA's win over Stillman when we come back. 
TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion Baseball team. Like the UNA Baseball Program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTfireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! What's going on up there? Definitely, Chuck. This is all for you. Oh. Are you serious? Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Our highlight segment today is of UNA 7-2 win over Stillman. And Coach Keene, it was a quick turnaround. You'd gone to Montevallo, got a big win on the road, and then returned home the next day to place a, a very good Stillman team, and you were able to get another win. All right, and Stillman's, uh, you know, in the SIAC conference. Uh, they've been in the regionals, I don't know how many, last four or five years. They usually win that conference. So, uh, obviously, they're a good ball club, uh, very well coached. Coach Crawford does a very good job. And so we knew it was going to be tough, and I, I did coming back on an emotional win on uh, on Tuesday, and trying to come back and play another regional opponent on uh, Wednesday. Uh, you know, I've got interesting how we were going to come out and do, and and you know Jake Smith coming on the mound. You can see this in the second inning where. Uh, you know, they come out right away, get some guys on base, get some hits, moving runners over, bunt. Uh, we're able to, you know, Jake makes a nice play there. Um, but, you know, again, they got a chance and they get right in the second inning, get the sack fly and get a run in. So, you know, we're playing from behind uh, right away. Um, but like I said, in a nine inning ball game, a long game, it's one of those things, one run early, you felt that we obviously were going to definitely have a chance to score some runs. And right now we're just trying to get outs and get out of the inning. Uh, here they come up, they try to squeeze play, and Dylan does a really nice job on this play. Uh, he didn't panic on it, stayed under control, got the out. It was a first and third situation trying to get the bunt down, so that was key to get the out. Now we get the ground ball, we got a chance. Instead of giving up uh, another run, you know, we're out of the inning and keep it at one to nothing. And, and that was, I thought that was really a key play to keep the game where it needed to be. You know, and again, as, as a game, I thought Jake pitched well. You can see you get, get out there. Normie's our starting right fielder, uh, coming out, attacking the zone, had good stuff, you know, and then just trying to get some things going. Again, you look at the third inning already, and I mean, we haven't scored yet. So obviously, their guy's pitching decent. Jake's pitching well, and it's one of those games where you, you just don't know if, you know, we had a real good offensive day. You didn't know what was going to happen. But uh, like I said, right now, it's just Jake's continue to strike, get in the strike zone, get the fly balls, and they're not really hitting the ball well, uh, giving us a chance. And that's what we tell our starting pitchers, give us a chance. And, and then the third inning is when we finally get a, get some guys on, get some things happen, and get into our system. And it really kind of disrupted their their style. So. And Jake's pitching and Kyle Stevenson both have really given you a lift in the midweek games. Yeah, and it really has been big, you know, with uh, with those guys jumping into that role, especially when we've had multiple games. But here we get a, you know, Conkle leads off uh, with a hit, uh, trying to get some things going. Uh, got a chance here. We do a little hit and run, and that pitch was, you know, up and in on his hands. And, you know, more than that, I tried to hit that on the ground, but it was like, well, so far in, and he was trying to, you know, just move the runner. And unfortunately, we got the ball to drop, so now we get, you know, the first and second. Uh, we're able to bunt him over. Then uh, we get, uh, we did bunt over here. Uh, Taylor Bonifazio didn't really get the pitch we want, but he was down. We were tagging on the play, and, and Kyle did a good job of, you know, we kind of took a chance on it. The guy threw it up the line, and it was a little bit risky. Um, but, you know, we took advantage of it and able to score a run, and that kind of got us on the board and, and kind of got everything going. So, And the way uh, we struggle, kind of struggle to score runs at times, you, you're a little more aggressive at that right, point. Right, right. And here's, uh, you know, in the, and in the fourth inning, you're coming out. We're just trying to, again, Jake's coming out, throwing strikes, getting fly balls, ground balls. We're making all the plays, and, you know, that's one of the things we talked about. As long as we stay good pitching and, can, and defense, you know, it gives us a chance. And, you know, here we go. And, again, the condition that it was cold that day and windy. Uh, the ball, I believe, was blowing in, so there wasn't going to be a lot of balls going out of the ballpark, and that ball was hit pretty well and stayed in. But there's Jake pitching on the right on the outside corner, gets a called third, and really locates that well and keeps them, you know, keeps them from scoring. And uh, you know, and again, trying to get some things going. And this is, I think, you know, Thomas Lumborg, who's you know got. Had, wasn't playing early in the year, has got a chance to play since the, the injury and really going back to kind of what he did a lot of last year, getting on base a lot. Here he does, it gets a leadoff walk for us. Uh, you know, we got Jake in there, gets it, gets up there and moves it there and it hits that ball and, and there's where his speed really comes in play and then he beats that out. So now got another infield hit, got some things going. Now we're getting to our two, three, four guys and you know, you feel pretty good about opening this game up and uh, you know, we got guys in scoring position and he dr hits the ball over there and puts some pressure on them. Their second baseman, they really struggled defensively in this game and unable 
able to make a play. So now we got a chance. We get to the bases loaded and you know, really hoping to open this game up. And like I said, here's what Kyle's been doing just such a good job on. He's just not biting anything. If it's a borderline pitch, he's not forcing it. So he gets that walk and you know, they walk in with the run and that's how you know, we're able to take a lead. On his player of the week last week, also he had four walks. So his on-base percentage was almost 600. Yes. And here again, we got uh, you know bases loaded. Probably not what Dylan you know was wanting to do to drive a little bit more. But the bottom line is, we moved the ball forward and got in another run. And that anytime you get a run, you need to get a run. And so we're able to you know get up three to one, and got a little bit of a cushion. Now it's you know important that Jake comes out and throws strikes and for us to get out of the inning. And here's a play. Their guy runs well. And you know, and this game was one of those where we actually got some calls. Uh, you know, we were on the good side of there was uh, one of them right there. Right there. <laughs> so we got on the good side of a lot of calls, and which really helped us. And now he comes back in and, you know, we sat back and they had a little bit of speed and we're able to get the, you know, get the fly ball and get out of it. And then we get another fly ball. And like I said, you, you know, that this is a day where fly balls weren't going to do much anyway. Uh, so again, Jake comes out, does his job and keeps the game at three to one. You know, are going to add a couple more runs here in the bottom of the fifth and extend the lead. Yeah, it's uh, again, you know, we're trying to get guys and got another one. Here's uh, Taylor Bonifaz does a good job to get a leadoff hit. Uh, now we got a chance and, uh, you know, to move some runners over. We do actually another hit and run. I believe it's Will Dennis. You know, trying to get some movement, uh, trying to get some things happening. Uh, the catcher was throwing decent. Good job on hit and run. See the guy go to the base, and Will is a breaking ball down and away and misses, and it forces them into a mistake. And then that error, that ball goes all the way down the line. And, and because we were running on the play, we are at second base quicker, so it allows us to score. And again, that was just basically trying to put pressure on them, uh, force them to have to make plays, and being off balance, we are able to do that. Now we go back into our short game, and here Josh Carbon lays down the perfect bunt. And, you know, once he gets to that stage, it's not going to go foul. Uh, now we've got a chance to, you know, first and third, get into another opportunity to do some stuff. And, and uh, here's a, a play where, you know, the first baseman's back. Uh, we put on a little safety squeeze, and, and uh, Thomas does a really good bunt here. They try to get us at the plate, and um, uh, Will didn't get the greatest jump at third, but the bunt was really located almost perfect where it is, so we were able to score the run, so another RBI, and that really helped us expand. So our short game, uh, which is really key in execution of that game, really got us that lead of 5-1 and, one and, and gave us a you know, much better cushion. And, uh, Jake Smith pitched six innings, gave up four hits. You got the Brantley. Uh, or Bradley Bailey in there now? Yeah. Go to the lefty? Yeah, we'll try to freshman there. He's been getting a lot. We felt we could get him to get a little bit more work in and see what he's going to do. Of course, first guy gives up the single. Here's a little soft play that Carpenter stays with and makes a play and uh, getting outs. You know, I thought it was a really good decision on Josh just trying to get the out because uh, right now we're just trying to get outs. We're not trying to push anything. And then they go for a bunt here, bounces out, trying to move runners, which was kind of surprising in the situation. But I think, they're, again, they're trying to just get runs and make something happen. Uh, then Bradley's been able to get out, get that ground ball, and here's an, you know, another play on a backhand, and, and we're on, a, on the good side of another close call, uh, which hadn't happened early in the year. It seemed like we were on the other side of every any ball that was close. You know, we were gonna, not getting any of them in this game. We were fortunate we were get, got a lot of the close calls. Lions back up in the seventh with a chance to get that run back. And here we go again, Jake just chopping the ball. They're in there for the bunt, and you know, with that ball gets there, you're not gonna throw him out with his speed. You know, once he gets down the line, it's, it's pretty much gonna be a hit. Uh, so it's good to get him on base. He can steal second, and again, we got a chance to move him in the balls. We try to hit in this situation. You want to try to hit him in, or at least get him over to third. And he chops it over there, so it did get him to third base. Then it brings up, you know, now we got, you know, Kyle Conkle and Dylan Boston. Here's another pitch up and in. They can't handle it, but uh, and then our speed at third, we're able to score uh, by basically getting the guy over. And, and that's where this, that's so important. Where that getting that runner over to third base. Why that's important to do that? Because now all of a sudden. Because if he's at second, all it does is move him up one base. Now allows us to score that run. So now we're up with a six to two lead going into the you know even late in the game in the eighth inning. They bring in a new pitcher, you kind know, of a submarine guy, and and will again will back in the lineup after an injury. And it's nice to have him back and and is starting to get a lot better swing as we go. And then walks, and then we got our other guys up here again. Now here's when they basically kind of collapse this inning. You know, they're and I know their coach is really frustrated. You know, there's a chance to make a play and they have an error and they, they end up having, I think, three consecutive errors here. And I know their pitcher's trying to get strikes. Well, here's another ball to side. It's not a not a great play, uh, you know, doesn't move well and, and can't get out of his glove. So now <clears throat> instead of being out of the inning, you got bases loaded. Now can we take advantage of it? You know, and Jake does hits this ball and kind of sinks and again. You know, the ball kind of caught him off guard and he misplays it and we're able to score another run and that ended up being the, uh, the run that the seventh run of the game and you know at that time we really didn't do a lot but you know but I'll take it. And you're going to bring in uh, Jacob Westerhouse here to close it out? Yeah and it's good to see you know Jacob need to get some work and like I said since he's kind of moved into the late inning does what Jacob's been doing well you see him attacking the zone you know getting those ground balls his ball's got some real good sink uh, gets it in and this was a real nice play because he jammed him 
and got in there. And I thought he did a good job of concentrating because that guy was running right by him and, and Hall was back because of the late in the game. And so he was really the closest guy to make a play. Then the guy ends the game, hits a line drive, and Dylan makes a nice snag to, to end the game and, and a good uh, in-region win for us against uh, Stillman, who you know more likely will win their conference. And as we said, uh, kept the momentum going. That was a second straight win. The Lions now are riding a six-game winning streak. But uh, Jacob Westerhouse there at the end had a great freshman season, struggled a little bit last year. But, boy, he's really worked hard and put himself in a great position in helping the team this year. He's been really huge for us because he was fulfilling about every role that we wanted him to. It was in the middle. Then we, uh, then we put him back in a close, kind of switched him and Austin Carpenter. And hopefully he'll continue to do what he's doing because, uh, you know, when he gets his sink and his slider in, he's, he's awful tough. We'll take another quick break, and we'll have some player profiles when we come back. TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion baseball team. Like the UNA baseball program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTFireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! He is the most interesting man in the Shoals. He is an artist, a writer, a philosopher, a historian, musician, astronomer, wine connoisseur, environmentalist, peace prize recipient. When he speaks, people hang on each and every word, especially the verbs. His personality is so magnetic that he cannot carry credit cards. It is said that once he taught a German shepherd how to bark in Spanish and taught a horse to read his email. Someone recently asked him what he did for fun, and here is what he said. I don't eat out every day, but when I do, I eat at City Hardware because to me, it's the most interesting restaurant in the shows. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. It's time now, Coach Keen, for our player profile segment. Today we're going to be looking at three Lion pitchers. Your pitching has been very consistent these year, 347 team ERA, and uh, here's a couple of guys that are the reason why. Drew Baxter has not been able to pitch so far this season. He's been uh, kind of a hard luck guy for you and been battling some injuries. Right, you know, Drew, Drew pitched a lot for us last year, uh, ended up having kind of a, a freak accident where he ended up hurting his shoulder and had surgery. and and really was bouncing back real well this fall and then did kind of had another one just we're doing a, a drill that um, kind of going through a line and dove just to try to make a, a time and uh, when he come out of there it, it popped his shoulder out again so he ended up being another setback and so what uh, coach Hancock and him try to do is, is try to get him to kind of throw down below as you see him right here which has been a you know that's tough to do when you're a senior and after you have a pretty you know he had a very you know good arm from throwing up top and and it's just one of those things. And then he had he, the other day, he had another little setback uh, from throwing. So it's, uh, you know, he, he works. Uh, he's great to have us on the, on the program as far as a teammate. He's really behind everybody. And I know how tough it is when you want to get out there. Uh, and it just seems injuries have not allowed you to do what you really wanted to do. But, uh, you know, I think he's a guy that's just, he's just really important to our program. Here's Brantley Clauncher, reliever for the most part for two seasons, but uh, one of your prime starters this year. He's 3-4, and four, but a 3-18 ERA. And he's been extremely consistent. His losses were some tough games, like a 2 to nothing game West Florida and a couple games like that. Yeah, Brantley was, uh, you know, that was one of the reasons in that role because he, you know, his, uh, he's got very good focus, uh, uh, can locate the ball really well. Uh, you know, there was always been a chance that he might move into the starting role, but he was so important in that middle because we needed him to kind of get us out of some jams. Uh, so when we started the season, we didn't know if he was going to stay in that starting role. And, and so because of, uh, you know, Jacob and some other guys fulfilling some uh, of the middle and the closing role, it allowed him to us to an opportunity to try him in that role. And, and that's really kind of what he wanted anyway. And, and he's been very, like you said, he's been very consistent for us. Uh, gives us a good, solid left-handed starting pitcher that a lot of times we haven't had over the years. And, and when his breaking ball is working, uh, he's very tough. And I know he matched up with that, the, the kid from West Florida, and that was probably one of the better pitching duels because they both were on that game. And he's gone deep in his performances. He leads the team with 45 innings pitched. 
Uh, then Jacob Westerhouse, he's been a reliever for you for all three years. 0-1 uh, this year, but a 1.88 ERA, 17 appearances, and he's been, really been the, the go-to guy for you. Yeah, and, and that was what we were, you know, we always were hoping he would do that. And I think again, both, uh, you know, both he and Brantley went out and uh, pitched in a, out in the summer, and were able to really work on some stuff. And I think that's the benefits of going out in the summer. And he he threw all sorts of roles that he did for you know, out in Wichita. I mean, he he would throw some middle games. He closed for him and and really worked on uh, what we needed him for this year. And and then came back with such such more focus, more consistency. And I think that's the key to this. Uh, you know, Coach Hancock, who works you know with our pitching coaches, always talks about attacking the zone and throwing strikes and forcing and forcing guys to swing the bat. And that's really what Jacob's done a whole lot better this year. And he's really worked on holding runners and fielding out the, all the, all aspects of the game that he's really improved on this year. And last year the bullpen was really a liability for the team, but uh, some of the things y'all have limited this year is the bases on balls and the hit batters. Uh, when the relievers have come in, they've really been effective for you. Yeah, and, and they've really done their part. Uh, we we're just talking there that one of the things this year, the pitchers, you, you can't blame a lot of the the, the losses on the pitching because they've given us a lot of innings. It's just our, you know, we were just really struggling with runners in scoring position, and, and that was, you know, part of our uh, the reason that we were losing some of those games. We'll take another quick break, and we'll talk about the Gulf South Conference race when we come back. TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion Baseball team. Like the UNA Baseball Program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTFireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! Hi, I'm Mike Keen, head baseball coach at the University of North Alabama. Have you ever heard the saying, great baseball players are made in the offseason? As a college baseball coach, I can tell which high school recruits are on a weight program and which ones are not. Help your young athlete reach the top of the sport by training with the personal trainers at the Courthouse Racquet Club. Our five trainers are ready to work at your athlete's pace and your schedule. Try our 3 and Me training program designed for three athletes to work with a trainer and lower the cost to fit any budget. Call Ken Irby at 764-0034 to set up a program designed especially for your young athlete. The Courthouse Racquet Club, proudly serving the Shoals for 30 years. A great combination, Frostbite and Montague's. Florence's first self-serve yogurt shop has over 50 rotating flavors and over 100 rotating toppings. Customizable frozen yogurt. When the cup is full, the toppings are close by. Just weigh and pay. All sandwiches at Montague's are under $5. The best Philly cheesesteak and Reuben in town. Delicious sides and they cater. Get a UNA student discount and they accept the main card. Like Frostbite on Facebook. Frostbite and Montague's, 1611 North Pine Street, Florence. Open now, Frostbite on the UNA campus. TVA Community Credit Union is proudly open to the entire community, offering unequaled service and convenience. They are the TVA Community Credit Union, and they make you feel like you're part of the community, part of the family. Customer service is great. I mean, they're, they're great with my wife and I, my daughter. We bought all of our house sets, all of our cars, everything through them. With a little one running around, I don't have a lot of time, so it's real simple just to pull my mobile up and go straight to the site and check my account. I recommend them all the time, to be honest with you. For one, I mean, their rates are great. Try to work with you to get you the lowest rates, to get you where you need to be, to set you up for the future. Don't feel like I'm a number at all. I feel like I'm a part of the family. From mobile banking to the latest platform in online banking, we make managing your financing fast and and easy. Our members are the owners of our credit union, so there are no high-priced stockholders to pay, allowing us to give our members totally free accounts and amazing loan rates. TVA Community Credit Union, everybody's credit union. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Time now to take a look at the Gulf South Conference standings and Coach Keene, West Florida, uh, not only one of the top teams in the GSC, but in the nation, 12 and two in conference play, 19 and four overall, uh, followed by Delta State, Alabama, Huntsville, Valdosta State. Uh, but UNA made a big jump to get back in the race with a three game uh, sweep of Christian Brothers and you're now five and 10 in the conference with four big series still to go. All right, we got a long ways to go. You know, it was a good start, uh, but we got to continue to do that because all the weekends from this point on to get a little bit of push are going to be very important. So we got to continue to play well. We can't take anybody lightly and hopefully we'll continue to play well down the stretch because, uh, you know, like I said, every week in the conference, uh, no matter who it is, it's going to be challenging. There's not a lot of runs being scored in the league. I know we struggled early on, but if you look at the conference uh, statistics, uh, 
A lot of the UNA guys have jumped up in there, but Jake Ward uh, right now th tied for third and runs scored. Kyle Conkle tied for second and hits. And then Dylan Boston and Kyle Conkle in the top five and runs batted in. It would really be surprising if you looked at their stats a couple of weeks ago, but they've had a couple of good weeks and uh, really seem to be hitting their stride right now. Yeah, and I, and I, I think that I was. You know, when you talk about it, I didn't know that. Uh, and and I think part of that is is, is the GSC is a very talented pitching, you know, uh, conference. And obviously that's uh, where you see a lot of them. And there are some – it's act like, well, maybe they can't hit. There's a lot of good hitters. It's just that pitching is so good that it's tough to get a lot of hits. And, and you know, like I said, if we, when you stay – patient stay approach and we did have finally some weeks where we've been able to do some stuff and even Dylan that's one thing about Dylan even though he's maybe you look at his average and struggling he's still up there in RBIs and you know when he does get he finds way to get us runs and and that's why he's been able to stay in that that four hole and then if he starts getting a little bit more consistent you know then he can really open things up. Next weekend at the end of spring break, you're going to be at Alabama Huntsville. They're a team that's playing very well right now, and that's going to be a very important series for you. Yeah, Alabama Huntsville, you know, they, they had a few injuries. They, a lot of their guys are starting to come back, and obviously they had a big win uh, against West Florida to win two out of three of the first team to actually beat them in the conference. And, and at home at, at UH, uh, they're tough at home. You know, they, they, they swing the bats really well at home. It's always a tough environment, so we know that's going to be a heck of a challenge. And then West Georgia going to come to Mike Lane Field, and that'll be a, another important series for you. Right, and you know, finally got West Georgia coming back to our place. We've been there the last three years. We've gone to West Georgia, and so and even played there in the conference yeah, tournament. So we've kind of had a lot of games at West Georgia. So it's nice to have West Georgia finally get to get to our field. But West Georgia is playing a lot better too. I think they're they're a team too that's a much more much improved team since early in the year, uh, and I know they got some very good arms too. And a couple of teams that will be uh, playing down the stretch run of the conference uh, that people may not be as familiar with, but you have Shorter and Lee, and they're both uh, good ball clubs and uh, capable of, of beating you, so uh, there's going to be some tough series for you as well. Right, and we got to go to both those places. We've never played at either ballpark. Uh, you know, obviously both those programs are very good NEI teams. We've a lot of playoffs, a lot of World Series. Uh, Lee's, you know, won a national championship for an NEI, so uh, don't know a lot about them as far as, you know, because they've only been, uh, you know, we played uh, Shorter last year, and Lee we've never played that I'm aware of. Um, so it's, you know, that's going to be kind of new to the style of play, what they have. Uh, obviously, I've seen some of their stats. They also, like everybody else, it seems to have at least a couple pretty good arms. So we know runs, you're going to have to get the runs when you can. Lions on a roll right now, six straight wins. What's the keys to keeping that success going? I think the, our focus, you know, we got to continue to work. Uh, that's the main thing about our don't get off track. We're starting to swing the bats a little bit better. But, but our pitching and defense has got to stay consistent. If we can do that and then start, you know, our, our hitting seems to be improving. Uh, I think that's what's going to get us through the next stretch and just execution. You're going to have a home game coming up Wednesday. It's a, I won't say a makeup game, it's a switch. Uh, some rain early in the year, you went up to Trevecca, but they're going to be coming here Wednesday, and uh, that'll be another uh, home game for our fans. Yeah, it's uh, you know another Trevecca is Division Two, doing very well in their conference. Uh, they've had so they're having a very successful season, very tough game, and uh, you know we did go up there because of the way the weather's been this year. So we we get another chance to get a home game, and then before we head over to UAH. And it's almost become a joke, but uh, it seems like every game that we've played has either been rescheduled, the time's been changed, uh, you battle through that, but the team uh, finally seems to have a handle on it and it's playing well. Yeah, I, I've said this, this year of any, you know, we ought to be able to handle any weather condition because we've been through about every conceivable one you could think of this year. So I guess that's a good thing we got out of this year. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you again next week here on the UNA Baseball Review. Thank you for watching the UNA Baseball Review. Please join us again next Sunday at 1130.